Imagine a world where every piece of waste can become a valuable resource. Every year, the planet produces more than 108 million cubic meters of particle boards, made from recycling 16 million tons of wood waste that could have rotted in landfills or been burned. It's not just a material, it's a recycling revolution. Old packaging, wood scraps, and even worn-out furniture are reborn to become the solid foundations of our kitchens, our tables, and our shelves. And did you know that 25% of this production is already certified as ecological and environmentally friendly? In this video, we will unveil the secrets of this industrial achievement. From giant shredders swallowing entire logs to heated presses where resin transforms chips into a monolithic block, discover how waste comes back to life in the perfect structural sandwich of a panel. It's much more than wood, it's the future of sustainable design. Are you ready to follow this journey from waste to masterpiece? Then stay tuned, because every step will amaze you. It all begins in a vast raw material storage yard, a place where the foundations of future panels constantly converge. Here, the idea of rational resource use comes to life on an impressive scale. Contrary to popular belief, high-quality commercial wood is almost never used in panel manufacturing. The philosophy is to give a second life to wood waste, transforming what was once seen as a byproduct into a valuable material. Mountains of raw material, several meters high, pile up here. The basis of this process is technological chips from low-quality wood, unusable for sawing. A large share comes from sawmills, slabs, the rounded parts of logs, plank cutoffs, and thin strips from cutting. Carpentry and furniture factories also supply planing and milling waste, chips, and sawdust. A major flow comes from secondary wood, pallets, crates, packaging, and even used furniture gain a new life after rigorous cleaning. Each batch of material undergoes strict control upon arrival. Purity is the key to quality, and the first step is to remove all metallic inclusions. Powerful electromagnetic separators capture nails, staples, or bolts that could damage the shredders. Then, screening systems eliminate mineral impurities, sand, stones, and other abrasive debris. When entire logs several meters long are used, they pass through a debarca or a rotating drum that removes their bark. This step is essential, since bark weakens the binder quality, compromises the product, and spoils its appearance. Once prepared, the cleaned wood begins its journey on long conveyors. It disappears into the mouth of a giant shredder, a monstrous machine capable of swallowing wood pieces several feet thick. Inside, sharp knives spinning at thousands of revolutions per minute reduce the wood into uniform chips. These chips, although regular, are still only a semi-finished product. Their cubic structure does not allow the creation of a dense and solid panel. A finer secondary grinding is necessary, performed in precision machines called flakers. This is where the true particle is born, the one that will give its name to the panel. The geometry of the chips becomes crucial, as it must be engineered with precision. For the outer layers, responsible for the smooth surface, fine flat flakes are produced. They look like flakes only a few hundredths of a millimeter thick. Their large surface adheres perfectly to resin, creating a finish ready for lamination. By contrast, the core layer uses thicker particles that form the resistant skeleton of the panel. They give it rigidity, the ability to resist bending, and to hold fasteners such as screws and bolts. But before assembly, the chips have variable moisture content, unacceptable for quality bonding. They therefore pass through enormous rotary dryers filled with hot air. Automated control ensures a strict moisture level, between 2 and 6 percent. Excessive drying prevents proper glue absorption. Too much moisture would cause internal cracks during pressing. After drying, the chips are sorted by size and weight. The large ones fit the inner layer, the fine ones form the outer layer. This is where the binder comes in mainly synthetic resins such as urea formaldehyde or melamine. The chips go into continuous mixers where the resin is sprayed in a sticky mist. Each particle is coated, ready to bond with the others. The quantity is crucial, varying between 6 and 10 percent of dry weight. Other additives can be added to improve strength or reduce flammability. The sticky chips are then deposited on a conveyor by a forming machine. This is where the chip mat is born organized into three layers. The fine bottom layer, the thick central layer, then a fin top layer. This sandwich structure guarantees strength and perfect finish. 
A pre-press compacts the mat, removing air and preparing it for transfer to the main press. This is the path of the process, hot pressing. In continuous or multi-opening presses, pressure of several dozen kilos per square centimeter compresses the chips. At the same time, the heat of plates at 200 degrees Celsius triggers the resin polymerization. In just a few minutes, the soft mat becomes a solid, monolithic panel. These burning panels are then slowly cooled in step coolers. Controlled cooling prevents deformations or internal stresses. The panels then go through calibration and sanding, giving them precise thickness and a smooth surface. Finally, they are cut to standard formats and subjected to rigorous quality control. Only panels meeting density, strength, and dimensional accuracy standards are marketed. They are then sent to furniture factories where they become those everyday objects we use without even thinking about it. Each panel is proof that even waste can become the foundation of our modern comfort. And now one essential thing, if you enjoyed this dive into the heart of sustainable innovation, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss the next explorations. Your support is what brings ever more immersive content to life.